Hello there, Wind Energy students! It's Dr. John Schrage, and we're working now on Module 7 of our class, which is going to be in part about the technology of wind turbines. Now, this particular lecture is actually pretty long, and uh, I'm not really thinking that you'll very likely do the whole thing in one sitting. Maybe you will. But um, being as it's fairly long with a lot of questions and so on, that's why we have that sidebar over there where you can navigate back, yeah, watch a few parts of it, come back later, you know, whatever. Because uh, I think that this one might be a bit long. Uh, now, when we're talking about turbines here, unfortunately your textbook does not have a lot of great information about turbines themselves. Remember, the t purpose of the textbook is sort of like meteorology for wind power engineering or some such thing. And as a consequence, the actual technologies used in wind power are not really something that is the focus of the book. That being said, there's actually a lot of really cool stuff that can be uh, learned about wind turbines. For example, uh, if we just needed a good dictionary definition as to what we mean by a wind turbine, well, um, I think this is from the, the Department of Energy website or something. I got that a wind turbine is a machine for converting the kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical energy. I don't know if I really love that definition. I can see a number of things that I'm not sure I, I care. I mean, mechanical energy would be like, you know, the kinetic energy of motion, like the rotating of the rotor or something like that. Um, I'm thinking that a wind turbine should be making us electricity, unless maybe it shouldn't be. I'm going to have to think about that if I like that definition. And, um, you know, for that matter, just the ordinary go to Google and type define wind turbine, you're going to get that it's a turbine having a large veined wheel with rotated by the wind to generate electricity. Again, I see pros and cons to this definition here, but I'm not sure that the defining a wind turbine is exactly our most important thing here. But what I'd like to kind of dwell on here is, do we mean this about it being, it's, it's capturing the ener kinetic energy of the wind, I like that part, and turning it into mechanical energy? Well, strictly speaking, that would be a windmill. Windmills uh, are, if you're taking the mechanical energy that is used directly, and you're using it directly by machinery, such as a pump to move water, or grinding stones to grind uh, grain or something like that, or to saw wood or whatever, strictly speaking, that's a windmill. A windmill doesn't bother converting the mechanical energy of the uh, the rotating shaft and so on into electricity, it's actually just using the mechanical energy itself right there on site. Um, you know, like these windmills that are here in the background on this slide. These windmills that are on the back of the slide are obviously, if, if you aren't familiar with it, I guess I shouldn't say obviously, this is Holland or the Netherlands. It's the, one of the low countries in Western Europe. It's actually down in, um, you know, like the 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 delta of the Ni of the Nile of the Rhine River and much of that country is below sea level and it was very slowly reclaimed over a period of centuries from the sea I, I don't like that word reclaimed but that is the term that we use uh, where an area would be drained using these kinds of windmills to pump water over a dike and then the uh, remaining land would be filled to some extent uh, but not necessarily enough, uh, you can, you know, if, if they left it alone, it would eventually fill back in with seawater. But there are pumps, historically, these kind of windmills that were used to lift the water back out over the next levee, or the next dike, or whatever, and eventually out to the sea. And historically, the Netherlands had hundreds and hundreds of these working for exactly that purpose. And in practice, they still have such things, it's just that they're modern, diesel-powered, and so on like that. These things are largely just tourist attractions now. Um, the idea of, though, having to use pumps to, to maintain territory that is below sea level is still something we have to do. There are pumps that keep the New York subway system dry. There are pumps that keep the Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans dry. Uh, there have to be pumping stations to put th those parts of the... Of, the lower ninth ward of, of New Orleans is below sea level. They Left to its own devices, it would fill with water. They have to pump water over a levee and into the Mississippi River in that case. I've actually been to Holland a number of times over the years, and it never ceases to amaze me. You'll be in some cute little village. A lot of the villages in Holland have famous typical cheeses. You can go to Edom and Gouda and things like that. And there'll be this big, what looks like a dam. 
on this side of the town, and you can walk up the stairs up the little, the little you know, earthen dam, and holy smokes, it's the ocean. <laughs> you're, you're actually considerably below sea level. Well, pumps, historically, windmills, are pumping the water over that uh, dike and into the ocean. Um, similar such technology had to be used uh, in the past to saw logs. That's what a sawmill was. Now, when you think of an old-fashioned sawmill, you probably have that kind of picture in your mind where it was a water wheel, where like it was stationed, the, the sawmill was along a bubbling stream, and there was a big paddle wheel that was turning in the stream, and that was what was driving the works that cut the logs. And that's all really good unless you live in a place that doesn't really have a lot of terrain. I mean, the difference between the highest and the lowest, lowest point in a place like Holland is only a few feet. There isn't a rapid river any place in Holland for like setting up a sawmill powered by water, they had to use their sawmills and have them powered by the wind. Now again, that's a type of windmill. We're actually using mechanical energy here to cut the log. We're not producing electricity and then running a power saw. We are using the mechanical energy that is directly captured from the kinetic energy of the wind to drive the, the, uh, the saw here. And I'm showing you these, uh, this YouTube video. Um, this is actually a, uh, a modern reconstruction of a Dutch wind-powered uh, saw, wind sawmill, but it is done based on traditional plans and so on, and it gives you a sense of how this thing works. I mean, the giant wind turbine up there is capturing kinetic energy from the wind, which is driving the, uh, the blades of a saw, and logs are pulled in. The actual mechanism that pulls the logs in is wind-powered as well, and as the logs are fed across the blades, um, it's hard to keep this synced up with what I'm talking about now, but you'll see it if not now, right around now, you'll see that, you know, you pull a whole log in and then there's a series of these band saws that are cutting it into boards. Well, this would be enormously labor intensive if this was done using manual uh, energy. Obviously, it was a huge mechanical advantage to be able to do this using wind power. Uh, boards are just too much work to cut by hand. You need to cut, you know, to cut them out of a log, you need some kind of sawmill, and in many parts of the world, they were wind-powered. Another very classic example of an application of a windmill would be for grinding grain. And this was done, again, in a lot of places. Again, a lot of places did it using water power, where, again, there would be a grain mill along a stream, and a paddle wheel would be turned by the flow of the stream and it would grind grain, but again, if you're not near a source of swiftly moving water, and Lord knows Holland is not, windmills become your next best option. And again, I have here a, a video from somebody I found on YouTube who had video of a tour of a wind-powered grain mill where the kinetic energy of the rotors is being used to drive grinding stones that are changing wheat into flour, I believe, in this particular example. But again, this is a technology, I mean, it's basically impossible to grind grain without some kind of mechanical advantage like this. To sit there and just pound grain with a mortar and pestle, you would never get enough grain to make a loaf of bread. You need to do it using some kind of mechanical advantage if you want to produce a significant amount of bread, and that is what a grain mill did. Um, another whole type of windmill that is useful and still is used extensively in the United States is the kind of windmill that they have on a farm that's for pumping fresh water. It pumps groundwater out of an aquifer and pulls it up to the surface to then be transferred into buckets or into a cistern or some such mechanism. I actually have a lot of familiarity with this. Um, as I think I've mentioned before in this class, uh, I grew up on a farm in rural Nebraska and that's how we got our water. We had a windmill. It looks actually very much like this one that's in this video here. In fact, I think that's even the same brand on the, on the fin of the, uh, the vein of the windmill that ours was. And as the windmill turned, it drives a shaft up and down and there's a mechanism on there that makes it slowly pull water up a, from a well. And it can lift water surprisingly far. Our, our drinking water came from a very deep well, several hundred feet deep. Uh, a simpler well uh, can be, you know, that gets uh, water that's closer to the surface. It doesn't necessarily have to be such a big apparatus as this one. But the basic idea the, of getting water from a wind-powered source like this is pretty slick. Um, 
obviously, we have an issue of the fact that the wind doesn't blow all the time. You need water, and you don't have uh, any wind to pump it. That's why a windmill like this is typically delivers the water to either large tanks or a cistern or something like that, so that when the wind is blowing, you get a reservoir of water that you are then using uh, at later time. And in fact, in modern windmills like this, there's usually also an electric pump attached that can be used as an alternative if the windmill is not, isn't working, uh, you know, if there's something wrong or whatever, or there's no wind. That same basic idea, though, of using wind power to move water is one of the basic ideas behind pumped storage hydroelectricity. Now, pump storage hydroelectricity, or PSH, is a pretty complicated technology. Well, it's a simple idea, but in practice, doing it is hard. Basically, you need two reservoirs of water, like a lower dam and a higher dam, like a lake and a higher dam that's up at a higher train. And what you do is you use a, some form of mechanical energy to pump water from the lower reservoir to the higher reservoir. That is a form of potential energy. You are storing potential energy by moving the water from the lower uh, reservoir to the higher reservoir. Then, later, when you need more electricity than you are producing by conventional means or whatever, you allow the water to flow from the higher reservoir back down to the lower reservoir and produce hydroelectric power from that. Now, this might seem like a crazy idea, this idea of shifting water back and forth between two reservoirs and letting it produce electricity, but it's actually surprisingly efficient. Uh, most of the sources that I found said that it runs about 70 or 80 percent efficient. That's certainly more efficient than, say, batteries or something. Um, and so uh, this is actually a pretty straightforward thing. Um, I've actually, I know they do this in Dublin, for example. I was in Dublin one time. I got a tour of, of, the, of a PSH facility. Now, in Dublin and in many places where they do this technology, the issue is they don't have enough capacity on their electrical grid to produce all the electricity they need during peak demand times. So what they do is at night, when demand is low, they use the excess production of electrical power by conventional means, I think it's coal in uh, Ireland, uh, to transfer, to pump water from the lower reservoir to the higher reservoir, and that way during peak demand times they can then use the hydroelectric part of the system to produce the extra electricity they need. But it wouldn't need to be. Any form of electricity, including any kind of like renewable source like solar or wind, would work just fine. And in fact, this could be really smart because we have a problem, we're going to see this vocabulary word just a little bit, but intermittency, oh, I think actually we do have it pretty soon here, um, this could be dealing with the problems we have of intermittency when it comes to wind power or, for that matter, solar power. I mean, every time you need electricity doesn't necessarily mean the wind is blowing at that exact moment. Every time you need electricity doesn't necessarily mean the sun is shining adequately at that time. It would be best if you could store the electricity that is being produced when you're not needing it and then you consume it later. And PSH, Pump Storage Hydroelectricity, is a promising technology for that. Use the wind power to trans to pump water from a lower reservoir to a higher reservoir, and then when the wind isn't blowing, you can allow the water to flow the other direction and produce electricity on a from the hydroelectric power. This is pretty smart. In fact, um, there is a big project under construction in the Atacama Desert of Chile where they're going to be using a PSH type system. They're actually mostly using solar, although I believe there's a demonstration part of the technology that's also wind. But when the wind is blowing and when the sun is shining, they pump water, actually it's from the Pacific Ocean, up into a, uh, a, a reservoir, a lake, uh, up in the Atacama Desert, and then when they need electricity, they flow the water back down uh, from the higher reservoir back down to the Pacific Ocean, and they claim, the, the company that is behind the project claims it's actually considerably cheaper than coal. That's pretty cool. Um, all these things so far that we've been talking about are producing the power directly. They're taking the, the energy that is being captured by the rotor and just using the, the, uh, the mechanical energy of the rotating shaft of the turbine. But if you use that mechanical energy to produce electricity, strictly speaking, what you have there is a wind generator. We're going to see this word generator later. More In general, the word generator refers to any way in which you take rotating mechanical energy and convert that into a electricity. 
um, whether that's a diesel generator or whether that's um, hydroelectric or whatever, any kind of rotational motion can be converted into electricity by a generator. All right, before we move on to part two of this lecture that's about wind turbines, let's do three quick questions here. Question one, in general, are windmills used to, elect, uh, to generate electricity? A, no, a windmill uses the mechanical energy directly on site. B, no, a windmill can only pump water. C, yes, a windmill features a generator to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Or D, yes, a windmill captures the electrical energy from the flow directly. Which of those th four possible answers correctly answers the question about are windmills used to produce electricity? Make a choice from those four options and get a little feedback before you move on to question two for this lecture.